Welcome, it's Alex, and this is a Far Cry game, so of course you want to be blowing up Father Mudge and everything as soon as possible, so I'm going to assist with that. There are some unique, rare weapons you can acquire towards the start of the game if you know where to look, and there's also a tank you can find and permanently unlock in like the first 30 minutes if you do a little slow and furious heist of your own. So get your soon-to-be tricked out Danny Rojas ready, oh, nope, wrong one, this Danny Rojas, and let's get the gun show started. First up, this is one you don't want to miss at the very, very start of the game, a powerful area of effect fire spewing shotgun. I actually made pretty good use of this thing in the early, mid, and even late game, so yeah, it's a fun one. This sweet baby was made in Grand Rapids, Michigan, comes loaded with the rank 4 incendiary shells attachment, a red dot sight, and the fresh clip mod, which increases the damage of the first shot after a reload. To find this, you'll need to head to the southeast coast of the Quito region, which is the little island where you start the game, and then look out for a lighthouse in Corto Cay. You will need to use your grappling tool to reach the top of that lighthouse, and up there, your shotgun will be awaiting you in a nice decorative chest. Since this can quickly blast a wide area of fire, along with Far Cry's built-in fire spreading mechanics, well, this is one easy way to really make a mess of an area. Woot. Since you want to be burning alive as little as possible, you can throw on something like the Fuego Mitts, which have the flame retardant ability that automatically puts out fires on your character. Also, you will come across some enemies or objects that emit that red poison gas, along with some of your own weapons doing the same, and the fire will ignite and detonate those clouds instantly. It's a good thing you now have a fiery shotgun, so you can help save the environment from those toxic emissions. Next up, if your preferred playstyle is an ultra long range sniper who is so far away from danger you could also be eating chips, you need to find this insane sniper rifle. It most importantly comes with a fully maxed out velocity stat, so you can almost instantly hit things from any distance, barely even needing to account for bullet drop off. The damage stat is also pretty good as well. Wait, it gets even better. It comes with the armor piercing mod, so you can headshot straight through helmets, a rank 4 advanced 10 times scope, a large muzzle break, which reduces some muzzle flash, an extended mag, and the fresh clip mod, improving the first bullet damage. Now to find this, you need to get off the intro island to where the whole game map opens up to you where you can pretty much go anywhere. This is in the Barial region in the northeast corner of the map, and on the north coast of that area you'll find this large fort. If you're going for this early, there will be a lot of anti-aircraft launchers trying to take you down if you try to fly there, so I recommend taking the water route all the way around instead, or you could simply drive there if you watch out for roadblocks. You don't have to fight anyone to get this, so don't be scared of venturing into a tier 7 area. Once you finally get there and sneak into the backside of that fort, again, the top of a lighthouse is your target and you'll need to grapple onto it from the watchtower on the side. If you're careful, you can do all this unnoticed. The sniper you now have can completely change the game if you like picking off your targets from a distance. As far as I can tell, you can kill enemies as far away as the game can even render them in. How's that for range? Good thing I captured this in 4K so you could even see that. Also, while you're already up at that lighthouse grabbing this rifle, in a nearby chest under and off to the side of that, I found the marksman goggles which had the thrifty shooter perk which refunds the round if it's a headshot. With that, plus the sniper, plus your immense aiming prowess, you'll never need to reload ever again. Next, taking us all the way back to the intro area of the game, why not have as many spawnable tanks as you could possibly want right from the start? In the Quito region, if you head northwest from your first home base, you'll eventually come across the F&D tank depot in Prado Meadows. Sneak around through this base, and a tank will have spawned in one of a few areas in there. Next, you'll need to actually save this tank for later, so you'll need to carefully drive this along this main road until you reach the Cabeza fuel depot. You'll need to have captured this camp, which you could do beforehand, or just use this tank to do so. Just don't get it destroyed, or you will have to restart this trek. Once you get there, take the tank into these four blue cones, which will unlock it for all the vehicle pickup points. Now you have as many of those beautiful tan tanks as you could possibly want. The downside of this amount of destructive firepower is, well, it's a tank, and the terrain itself can sometimes be its entire downfall. 
Just don't leave it hanging if this happens to you. Put old Jimmy Dean down, or whatever you name your tanks, so that it doesn't get left behind in such a shameful state. Next is one of the quickest barrages of damage you'll find in the game, a six round incendiary grenade launcher. This thing can take down entire outposts before anyone has time to even consider raising the alarm, because they're likely on fire. This has a maxed out damage stat, the incendiary grenades attachment, the nimble shooter mod which improves speed while aiming, and the reload all mod which reloads all of your weapons when you reload this. It's pretty slow though. To get your hands on this, you'll need to head to Aguas Lindus in the northwest part of the map, and then in the southwest part of that region, you'll find the steel plant. Once you're there, you'll need to find the storage locker key inside the building, and then you can take that to this little room on the side of the steel plant to grab yourself that grenade launcher. The downside of this powerful explosive is that it will chew through your ammo pretty quickly. You might want to consider throwing on the Rocketeer Pocket onto your Supremo backpack, which will somewhat expand the stock of your explosives. There's also a meal buff you can consume if you build a cantina in one of your camps, which increases your entire stock of all ammo types, and in the trunk of your main ride, you can replenish ammo there as well. So while the carnage lasts, this thing is the fire and wind button, and its gold trim looks pretty good while doing so. And last, those are some of my favorite pre-built weapons you can find out in the world, but you can choose to completely avoid those and just focus on modding out your own custom ones instead. Here, for example, I fully customized this assault rifle to be a tactical headshotter that works well at close and long range. It started out as this blank tier 4 weapon, and after some tinkering, modded it up into this much more intimidating version. The armor piercing rounds I put on it allow it to hit through helmets, and it also greatly increases the velocity stat. I then threw on a suppressor and two different range sights to toggle between. However, the main interesting synergy of this thing is its ability to rapidly recharge my Supremo, that backpack ultimate like ability. The Headshot Supremo mod gives some charge when landing headshots, and the other mod improves weapon damage when aiming. On my Supremo itself, I also put on the Sharpshooter mod, which gives even more charge for those headshots. So you might be starting to see the bigger picture here, fire the big stuff, headshot, 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 fire off the big stuff quickly again. This makes for a super versatile weapon that can handle just about any situation, and lets me fire off my Supremo ability multiple times in one firefight, something you usually can't regularly do. Adding on to a custom gun like this takes far more playtime and gathered resources compared to the instantly obtainable other guns I covered before, but this should give you an idea of what a higher tier custom weapon can do. And that wraps this all up. Those were some of my personal favorite guns in Far Cry 6, but there are many, many, many more out there. By the way, if you haven't checked out my Far Cry 6 Advanced Gameplay Tips video yet, well, it has even more good stuff in it as well. And tomorrow, I have a video coming out that is a weapon combo that was too spoilery for this, so check that out if you're okay with some special quest spoilers. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching this all the way up to the very end. I'll see ya.